Here's the start of another BMW underside restoration. This time it's a BMW E46 330 Ci automatic um, car is 2003 and it's got 114,000 miles on and it's in with us at Reedish Motorsport for an underside restoration. The owner's had this from um, quite close to when it was new I believe and he loves the car so much he's, uh, he's considered um, buying a new one but nothing's really of interest to him at the moment so he's considering um, refreshing this car to a high standard so he can keep it for the rest of the car's life and um, he never planned to sell it so that's why it's here having one of our underside restorations so we're just going to quickly show you some of the um, sort of original parts of how it's arrived with us after these years and the mileage on the car so it's not in too bad order we haven't yet got to the chassis to see what sort of corrosion is there but it's typical of vehicles um, of this sort of era on the road fair amounts of corrosion setting in on the rear of the chassis certainly um, the hardware the actual hardware like the diff carrier here and the differential itself the black coatings that BMW supply these items with really don't um, last very long at all even just a couple of couple of years it seems before they start pickling and then that just uh, really takes hold as the car goes on every single year through winters and things like that drive shafts are quite corroded and so are the shafts themselves um, anti-roll bar brackets are corroded even things like the brake pipe brackets in the distance are corroded but from the flat areas that we can see of the chassis they look quite good although they're dirty which all cars are they appear to be quite well at the moment um, trailing arms typical sort of corrosion but they're quite heavy uh, pieces so they don't ever sort of break because of the corrosion they just get quite dirty the backing plates are quite corroded um, but everything seems in order it's all here and in original pieces nothing's been modified or taken off as such there's a broken exhaust rubber mount up there in the distance and some of the heat shields are a little bit loose where they've corroded through their fixings like that where the galvanic corrosion is started on the steel stud and nut compared to where it was touching the aluminium pieces. Uh, the exhaust is in average condition, it appears to be usable at the moment. We'll know a lot more once we've stripped this car down. Center plates here and then the brake lines, fuel lines, things like that and always gets a very dirty section down this side where the, this is a standard factory wax on this location here and then it just picks up all the road dirt over the years. Little bits of corrosion in the edges but we'll come on to the chassis a little bit more in general. This is just a quick visualization of the underside of the car and certainly the axle components as well so you can see how much corrosion that they actually hold and then at the end of the process you'll be able to see the difference after we've finished working our um, magic touch on it and everything is powder coated or renewed or refurbished or replaced. We're quite a way through the strip down process on this BMW 330 now. So the rear end is completely uh, dismantled by the shock absorbers. We still need to go inside the car to um, release the top mount behind the carpets in the boot. But we've got everything else off. Um, so we're looking up at the rear, the boot floor section or the spare wheel area, rear axle carrier panel. There's where the fuel tank would live in there. And then we're looking further down the car towards the front central sections. And we'll go down to the front a little bit later in the video. But this shows the condition of the car. So it is a very good car, actually. There's hardly any corrosion on there. Small amounts of local corrosion on the fuel pipe brackets here. A little bit on the spring turret up there. Um, and on the fuel strap brackets just here. Tiny small bits in the trailing arm pockets and little bits around the sort of jack and point seal structure just on the left and the right hand side actually but in general it's not too bad we've seen lots worse than this a few little bits of corrosion on the edges of the rear axle carrier panel there and also on that bracket up here this car does need the bracket for that pure stud just there and that one up there that one we could probably remove and possibly consider chopping down this bracket because it doesn't need all that we might just try and make a custom um, finish up here just to get the corrosion out inside there because we're going to be doing some corrosion treatment work as well. One of the under tray brackets needs some treatment, so does the rear axle carrier panel around there and that strut 
um, spring turret up there. But the rest of it, although it's um, grimy and dirty, that will all come off later on when we do the degreasing process, is actually very good. Um, still nice, fresh e-coat colourings underneath this dirt. So we're looking forward to seeing what it comes out like when we start the degreasing process. Brake pipes we still need to take off as well. One of the brake pipes, well actually both brake pipes we're going to be replacing because the right hand side one is corroded at that point there. It seems silly not to do those whilst we've got great access because the fuel tank's out of the car. Fuel pipes we still need to take off. So looking under the central section, also very good. We've got the side skirts off. We need to get clear all this heavy wax that BMW applied to the um, fuel pipe and brake pipe areas. It would have been original, like a yellow colour like that, but because it gets years worth of dirt and grime, it then turns black and it's very hard to get rid of. So we'll be taking that off as well. And then cleaning all the central floor sections underneath the passenger feet area. We'll also be changing the gearbox, it's an automatic car, we'll be changing the gearbox, um, oil, filter, gasket, and we're also going to do the pan as well. Need to renew the studs on the exhaust system because they're a typical M54, um, gets extremely corroded. So we managed to get the nuts off, but some of the threads are very poor and are not likely to hold nuts again. So we'll be changing those as well. And then coming up to the front of the car. So we've started the strip down process. And what we've got left the in the front car, cross member, which is supporting or needed to support the engine uh, in place whilst we're still working on the car. That will be changed, but later on in the process, we want the engine to be safe whilst we're working in underneath the car. And, um, and we want the engine to be dangling for the least amount of time as possible. So that'll be changed once we've got the replacement one here, which is powder coated, ready to go on. Um, but everything else is stripped out. So wheel arch liners are out. So are the front control arms, the front tie rods, the steering rack, front struts, hub knuckles, um, the springs, everything really, front control arm bushes, um, and we're getting to look at the inside, very good actually, you can nice and clean up there in the arches where the wheel arch liner has been protecting, um, which is why it's all clean up there. That bit there the arch liner doesn't cover, so that's got just general road dirt on it. Wings have already been replaced, so we know that, and customers mentioned that, and that's why there's some paint and protection layers up on the inside edge, the wings are in good order. There's also what looks like factory cavity wax on these structures behind the wheel arch liners. This does look quite factory sort of colorings and very uniform on both sides. Um, and that's also been doing a great job at keeping all these ledges free from corrosion because that's where lots of mud and water like to sit and they've not been able to cause much corrosion. As you can see, they're really quite nice and fresh up there. So that's very good news as well. A um, little bit more wax. This may have been done by somebody else, but I think it is factory. Um, normally you see corrosion up in those areas here, but they're looking quite fresh. We'll see a lot more once we take out the um, take out the well, the dirt and things to get all the grime and th dirt off like that. We did find one anti-roll bar mount that had been welded. The actual aluminium bracket here, which goes on the anti-roll bar D bush, that had been welded with aluminium welded quite nicely. Um, and also you can see some welding repair has happened here. We've seen this once before on an E46 M3. When those brackets do snap, because they are aluminium, they can crack and snap, then it pulls the stud out. And so somebody's done a weld of repair there, and that's why there's a little bit of paint up in that area. So we'll address that, and we'll look closely to make sure there's no hairline cracks coming out of those repaired items. And if so, then um, hopefully just neaten that up and see if we need to touch up with any colorings or anything just to disguise it although somebody has painted over the um the pipe as well so we'll see if we can scratch all that off uh just to try and make this as nice and original looking as possible everything else is looking pretty good at the front it's just mainly some corrosion areas at the at the rear small little bits of corrosion just up there on the roll bar mountain on the right hand side but in general it's pretty good so as the underside doesn't really look much at the moment because it's still in the strip down phase but going right to the back of the car we are pretty much stripped down a few more bits to go and then we can start the degreasing process that's a quick comparison to show what the degreasing looks like so i've degreased the left hand side rear of the car i haven't done the wheel arches yet but just drawn a line down the center and i've degreased the left hand side of the boot floor uh, rear axle carrier panel rear trading arm pocket and the rear seat sort of fuel tank area makes a big difference. I haven't touched anything on the right hand side, I haven't added any dirt or made it wet in any way. That's just the original dry dirt that came in, like, and then that is the
the clean side that I've just done there. So next I'll do the right hand side and also then do the wheel arches on the both left and the right hand side. We've now split down and separated most of the axle components underneath the car and we're just putting it into sections of how we're going to um, carry out the refurbishment work. Some of this will be blasted um, and some of it will be powder coated. So this is going to be the first batch that we're going to deal with, which is all going to be powder coated. So mainly the rear, but there's a couple of front items here as well. We've got the rear cross member, no bushes at all. The seven bushes that sit in that normally, and now they've all been pulled out. Front pushrod connection, upper spring arms, both bushes removed. Rear trailing arms, so the trailing arm bushes are taken out. Bushes at the bottom, ball joints at the top, wheel bearings, drive flange, handbrake pivot assembly and backing plates. Obviously on the brake disc and the backing and the brake caliper and carrier are all removed as well and there's the other side there. Then we've got front kingpins so they've had all their disconnections. So no hubs with the wheel bearing integrated, no disc, no backing plate, no um, caliper or carrier, no strut, no tie rod, no front wishbone. And then we've got the front cross member which, um, which there's no bushes in that, but that's just ready to go as well. So that'll be phase one, and then later on, we'll be doing this lot as well. Some of that will be powder coated, some of it will be blasted. We've got things we're gonna be upgrading. So we've got uh, an M3 aluminium front reinforcement plate, which connects into a few more locations, like the, um, the well, mainly the lollipop bushes, um, front hubs, sorry, they're rear hubs actually, they're gonna be blasted tank straps, gearbox, bracket, rear subframe washers for the bolts, exhaust plates, fuel filter cover, rear roll bar, front roll bar, we're upgrading that to an E46 M3, and then we've got a set of springs as well, rear core springs and then a pair of fronts. So now we've done the degreasing on the BMW E46 330 through to the fuel tank area, including the rear wheel arches, and then the central sections down towards the front of the car including the front arches as well. It's come up fairly well. There are some paints in the wheel arches at the rear, some black paints that have been applied, so those aren't coming off, but the rest of the, um, the dirt and the grime and the road film has come off. Uh, still a little bit more to do in the tunnel where there's some sticky uh, butyl tape for the prop shaft centre bearing and also that needs a second going over. Well, actually, it'll probably be the fourth going over. That's the area where it gets the BMW factory wax and then all the dirt and um, grind for the last 10, 15 years ends up sticking to that. So that was always a really hard patch there because that's where the brake pipes and the fuel pipes are waxed from factory. So now we can see a little bit more of the chassis when the dirt isn't on there. So we've got some corrosion areas that we need to take care of. On the very corners of the rear axle carrier panel, some studs, rear axle carrier panel, spot welds, spring perches, brackets, and the fuel tank where that's been rubbing. Same with the right hand side, fuel tank rub, and then various little bits on the seat panel and on the corner, also front area of the rear axle carrier panel, plus the two brackets for the brake pipe and the fuel, type, fuel tank strap brackets. That spring perch is quite affected, so that one needs to also work. Um, also on the edge of the rear axle cow panel there, where there's some factory MIG welds. The sealer's blowing away from those, so that will need work in. Same with that rear axle cow panel mounting point for the right rear, and also that bracket for the under tray, and also the bracket for the uh, fuel carbon canister. We need to keep that half of it, but the rest of it will be going. Uh, it's looking quite bright on the fuel tank area. The strap brackets need to be done on both sides, the left hand side one's a bit more worse. Bits on the trailing arm pockets as well. A um, little bit on the edge of the pipe aperture. And then same on the left hand side, just various little spots on the corners of seamed edges and on little spot welds. A bit on the trailing arm pockets. Um, there isn't really much down in the central sections. These are great. Lovely uh, chassis legs. Sometimes you get little bits of sealer breaking off here where the corrosion is starting to touch in, but this is fantastic. Looks almost as good as when it left the factory. Um, oh, but there is some corrosion here, definitely. We need to stalk this out. So where the grommet is um, applied at both rear corners, we can see that it's corroded on the metal edge, but also underneath the seam sealer, it's bubbled with pimples. That's corrosion under there. So we'll touch that and it will just start growing and growing. So that'll be a large area of seam sealer we need to take out. Let's see what else we've got. 
got. I've got the same on the other side as well, so that I need dealing with. I think that is about it, really. Central sections look fairly good. Front end also has been painted with like a wax on it, where it's had the wheel arch here, the, the front arches, wings have been replaced before. This black up here is non-factory, and there is some cavity wax that's been applied. Initially I thought it was factory cavity wax, this yellow item, but I think it has been done when the wings were off to be replaced, and the wheel arch liners were out, because it's over the top of the turret, strut turret area, and also generally in areas here which are also is holding the dirt extremely well and making it very hard to get off because wax is extremely good at holding things so need to go over that again and then just go down the chassis legs here to carry on the fresh sort of look underneath but apart from that we can now move on to the corrosion removal process and start wire wheeling all this back to bare metal and then treating it. So just starting to remove the loose corrosion on the panels before we tackle and treat it with um, a rust inhibitor or a neutralizing product. So underneath these brackets there will also be corrosion inside uh, that you can't get to and also in between the panel layers. Now we can't sort that out in every instance because certain panels you just can't take off like the rear axle carrier panel there's not much you can do about it but in smaller panels here which are prone to the elements and these are totally exposed they have no seam sealer on it and they get lots of um, watery salty sort of atmosphere just sitting in there whereas panels up there shouldn't be too bad in the seams because that's quite a hidden area and it's also covered with good seam sealer anyway so we're going to take these brackets off um, by drilling out the spot welds and then treating uh, basically wire wheeling the backs of them <coughs> or even blasting them and we're going to be doing the same with this bracket here I'm just taking it off just drilled the spot welds out to show you the corrosion level <coughs> excuse me beneath the bracket this is just a bracket purely for an under tray fixing but quite interesting look at the corrosion level behind there so lots of places and people will just um, why will the outside edge of the bracket or what they can access and even down into the very corners but if you don't remove the bracket you're leaving all that corrosion trapped in there and once you seal over it it's possibly going to be a lot slower at growing but it's still going to fester in there because it was between panel layers so we're doing what we can to um, reduce that risk in the future and remove as much corrosion as we possibly can do. So that's the battery tray once we've removed the bracket, which is that one there, which we know is always covered in corrosion underneath, but it's quite surprising how much is there and you can't get to that without taking the bracket off. On the M3 models, we completely removed that bracket because it's not needed, but on uh, a 330, for example, like this car, we need that thread just down there. So we're gonna decide whether we're gonna keep the end of that bracket or whether we're gonna make a new bracket with a thread in it. Not quite decided yet, but removed it anyway and it is reusable. So we'll take a consideration on that. But first of all, we gotta take rid of, get rid of and treat that corrosion there. So part way through the corrosion treatment process now, now we've wire wheeled all the loose corrosion away. Now we're using Pour 15 Metal Prep on a brush, which is a liquid, which obviously seems quite odd putting that onto bare metal, but it's a neutralizing agent, which has to stay on the car or on the bare metal for 30 minutes. So we're just doing that on all the areas that we've treated corrosion. Here's the brackets that we've removed earlier on and treated that corrosion behind there. Removed that, because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to get to it. Lots of corrosion and pitting marks still left on the spring perch, but you can see all the loose corrosion's gone now. And we can't actually replace that panel or thin it out in any way. You can, normally on metal, some metals, you can thin them by grinding them to remove the peaks and troughs in the, that the corrosion's left. But on a spring perch, which is getting loads of compression energy, we can't thin that out in any way. Um, we don't like to cheat and we wouldn't do that anyway. So um, there's not much you can do apart from neutralize it like this and then use high quality etch primers and the, the treatment process later on will stop that growing and stop atmosphere getting to that. But here's the, so we're working just on the right hand side. So part of the rear axle carrier panel, right rear corner mount corrosion up on there. We're doing it in sections at the moment, doing half the car still. So that side I haven't done, this side I am doing. Taking the bracket off on the boot floor, 
you see all the peaks and troughs and the metal grain that have been um, corroded or affected by the corrosion. And also the battery tray area now as well. We've got the redundant bracket off up there we don't need. We've got the whole strip off here. Still deciding whether I'm going to put that back on up at this end or whether I'm going to make a new one. But um, that shows you the treatment that we're going through in that area to try and rid the car of corrosion. So like I say, working on the right hand side at the moment. At some point I will have to stop doing the comparisons because we'll be at a point where we need to paint or protect the vehicle and that will have to be done in one piece. And obviously we can't just show powder coated processes on the right hand side of the car and not the left for instance. But this hopefully just gives an indication of um, what it looks like on the left hand side where there's no corrosion work gone on and on the right hand side where there's lots of bare metal where the corrosion has been knocked off and removed and is now being treated with Pore 15 metal prep. Now we've washed off the remnants of the Pore 15 metal prep we can now take a closer look at the corrosion treated areas once the camera zoomed in correctly and see that they're a lot more of a metal colour now, now that the corrosion is all knocked off and been neutralised. Up here is a good example, although it's still dark and it looks corrosion, it's actually so so clean you could actually sometimes hear my fingers squeak. How dry that is. And there's the bracket areas. We took off the uh, fuel tank strap bracket and the brake pipe bracket, all treated underneath. The areas around the mountain point, spring perch especially, had lots of corrosion up in there. It's all now totally dry, dried with an infrared lamp. There's the right rear, rear, rear axle carrier panel mount point. The bracketed area where the um, bracket is for the under trays and also the, the battery tray area. Now that's all nice and dry, corrosion free and no dirt on there as well. Like I say, it's been dried with an infrared lamp, so that's the difference from the left hand side to the right hand side of the car. And now I can move on to the left hand side and do exactly the same. So I'm just still working with the Port 15 metal prep. And I found some corrosion uh, edges on the seal section near the jacking point pad. So I've just opened that seal section up slightly just by um, bending the metal very slightly. Obviously we don't want to take a seal panel off inner seal or quarter panel to do a repair but I've just investigated and I'm quite sure that the corrosion hasn't traveled too far so I've just opened it up slightly, wire wheeled out as much as I can and then also picked the rest of it out and then I've just treated it with Pore 15 metal prep so I've actually put it inside of the seal section and it's clinging quite nicely inside so that gives me good reassurance that the corrosion that we have noticed um, which is inaccessible um, is likely to be contained and neutralized as best as possible. Now I'm working on the left hand side now because um, all that area has been wire wheeled and the corrosion has been removed and I found exactly the same a little bit here where I've opened the seal to send in the Pore 15 metal prep and also in the corner we didn't have this on the right hand side but we did have corrosion creeping underneath the uh, seam sealer in this area so I've dug out as much as I can and again I've sent it in and here's the lower floor section where it meets the bulkhead rear bulkhead section and I've got it all sort of in between the layers so it may seem odd because it's putting a liquid in between metal layers and in a cavity but this is a treatment um, or neutralizing agent which is going to slow down that rust acceleration really nicely and then we'll make sure we get it out we'll be blowing these with um, high compressed air and then also leaving infrared lamps on underneath it to make sure we're fully dry before we even think about closing the seal and applying paints and seam sealers and things like that. So most of the work with the corrosion is nearly finished. Uh, just doing my spot checks and I've got three areas um, that I want to attend to. So I always take a step back and have a look because it's such a colossal area and so many intricate fine curves and points on the undersides of the 46 that sometimes when you're close up to something and you've got your head in a corner, you forget about something. So there's taking a step back and there's well some waiting for some things to dry and there's three areas I need to look at. Um, that grommet hole over there in the right wheel arch above the rear trailing arm pocket, that's got some corrosion.
it's a corrosion around the handbrake console. Um, one of the studs was really poor there, so I had to take that off. Um, I'm going to use a stud system in that hole there and grommet the other one. So So once we've got those seals completely dry and we're happy, then we can move on to um, etch primer stage. Here's an example of the level we go to to remove corrosion behind brackets. Now if you watch our other E46 M3 restoration videos and sometimes just our rear axle carrier panel videos, you'll see that we take off these brackets. These are the fuel pipe or fuel tank brackets and, um, and these are the brake pipe brackets. And although we can get to this side of it, which is visible underneath the car, we can wire wheel as much off as we can. We can never get to the inside of it because these are spot weld holes that I've drilled out. That's where it's connected to the chassis. So you can never get to the backs of those areas there. And those areas are commonly corroding. Um, and also, they're also quite small and intricate channels, which you can hardly get any tooling inside of to get that corrosion out of there those panels there. So what we do is drill the spot welds out to remove those and then we aqua blast them and this gives you um, an example of how good the finishes are. Sometimes if they're really pitted and bad, badly affected with corrosion, they don't come out as good as this. Here's one that we've aqua blasted and it just looks brand new. I mean you can't buy these brand new but if they were brand new that's what I'd hope they'd look like, just pure perfect brand new steel metal and this is one that I've done myself with a wire wheel because I can get to all the contours of this it's not that complex a panel or piece whereas this bracket is there's quite a deep channel in there which you can't get to so aqua glass those mechanically do those ones and what it means is that it's bare metal it's nice and protected so when we go to weld that onto the car we know that everything is um, as good as possible. I mean, we can't unstitch or unpick the entire car sheet by sheet, but certainly the brackets that we can see and access to remove, we can deal something with. So we're gonna now coat the backs of these with um, copper weld through primer, and then plug weld them on through their original connection holes, and then smooth down those plug welds to try and hide the areas that we've removed them. And then when we do our complete paint finish underneath the car, they should just blend in and look very factory original. So then talking about brackets that we were just uh, referring to earlier on, I've now taken the battery bracket off and worked out what I was going to do with this area here. So this is the bracket that we've removed, the entire length of it in its corroded state that we don't need anymore. And now we're going to, we're just going with a bracket there which I'm going to put a rib stud in. So there'll be a stud hanging out of here. And rather than putting a bolt up that way, we're going to be doing a nut on the end because there'll be a stud hanging out of there. So that all lines up and works with that little area up there. You'll see that once it's all fitted a bit later on. Another bracket I've done, which I'm pleased with, is the bracket here on the boot floor, sort of the spare wheel section. Um, this is uh, a bracket just to hold the carbon canister plastic under tray or cover. Um, we, you can buy these from BMW, but it was on back order and I didn't want to wait five days. I needed to, uh, to get on with this. Um, so that's the original one that I've taken off and it was too thin and heavily pitted 
and corroded to use again. And I took it off because I wanted to get the corrosion out of this panel. You can see the pits just down here. But also I wanted to get the corrosion off the back of that. And whilst it was off, I decided I didn't want to reuse it. So I've made that one there, which is a copy or a replica of this one, very slightly. It's a tiny bit wider, if I'm honest, but that won't make a difference. The holes are in the same place. It's got the little returns and the lips and the folds on the side. So that's etch primed and it was weld through primed behind it before we welded it on. And then I've done two plug welds here, which is what the factory had, two spot welds. And then just flatten those off. So that's that one dealt with as well. And then here's some of the brackets. I've just welded these on, just plug welded them on. And you notice I've got weld through primer behind them, which is that copper color. And I've got just the right amount, enough of a square for exactly where I'm welding to. We'll see where I've masked up, but I've not got a load of copper weld through primer wasted in there because etch primer is far better than copper weld through primer. So I'd much rather have the back of this area here with etch primer rather than copper weld through. So that's what I've done. I've just made the bare minimum amount of copper on the squares that I needed to, so that where behind the welded contacts there is um, some protection basically. So that's what they look like when they've just been plug welded on. And now I'm gonna come along and smooth all these off and shape them so they look as original as possible. And then buff everything to clean it up and then coat it with a etch primer so it blends in with the rest of the etch primer that I've got on the rest of the rear axle carrier panel. There we go, there's an example of the brake pipe bracket. This has been flushed down in three places. Although you can see the slight dents or uh, sanding marks in the paint because I've obviously got the torch on it quite close. You can still see it's quite a smooth finish and now that's got edge primer on it, just drying. And once that's dry, then we can move on to the high build primer stage. Here's a few of the things that we've had aqua blasted. Uh, front under tray, so the eagle eyed viewers will notice that this is an M3 under tray. We're going to add a few M3 touches to this 330. Um, so we've got an M3 under tray, which is going to pick up on the through those holes there into the front control arm bushes, which we're going to aim to put the M3 control arm bush brackets on there, which have got threads in there. We're not using M3 ball joints, so um, on the in the front control arm. So we're aware that they're not going to bolt in through those holes there. We're going to see how close they run to it, and if it's possible without them touching. If not, then we will alter this front M3 under tray and take the corners off. But that's one under tray. Then we've got fuel tank straps, um, rear hubs, rear subframe washers for the rear bushes, and the gearbox cross member. Here's the powder coated items that we've got back. So we've got them through three colors. We've gone for an OEM black, which is a satin finish. We've gone for an aluminium copy on the aluminium components, like the top arms and the what we call the push rod. Uh, which is the front lower brace for the front subframe mount bushes under the rear subframe itself. And then we've gone for an ultramarine blue, which was specified by the customer. Um, a nice dark blue, which is actually really nice. There's good contrast against the two. Um, there's also going to be a bit of red in this car as well, but only a few things like calipers and I forget what else it is now without looking at the list, but there's going to be three to four colours on this car underneath. So. Here's the rear trailing arms, completely disassembled, blasted, powder primed, powder coloured. Front king pins, which is what the whole front suspension system connects to, up at the outer wheels. Front and rear anti-roll bar, upper rear spring arms, like I say push rod. Front cross member for the engine to sit on and for the steering rack to mount to, and the front cross member, uh, front control arms to mount to. Then we've also gone for the ultramarine blue on the front springs and the rear springs, along with an OEM black finished rear subframe, which is the main central piece of the rear axle. And then also a fuel filter cover in uh, OEM black, and then ultramarine blue on the exhaust plates as well. And then we also are gonna be powder coating the exhaust. That's still being done at the powder coaters, but that's going to be in a high temp black. So when that comes back, that should look really good as well and set the uh, set the tone and finish everything off nicely underneath the car. I've given the engine a scrub and the uh, gearbox and the chassis legs and other ancillary components and pipe works up on there. We're not really changing anything on the engine or pipe works. Everything's in really good order. So 
it just required cleaning up and just try and give it a little bit more brightness and now it's drying under the infrared lamps. Here's just some of the bushes and ball joints for the 330 restoration. So it's not everything, these are just a few. So we've got rear subframe bushes, trailing arm ball joints, upper arm inner bushes, rear trailing arm bushes, diff bushes, wheel bearings, front control arm bushes and anti-roll bar drop links. So there's obviously going to be two of those but only one's arrived from BMW at the moment. Um, and there's more bushes to come as well, that's just a few of them. We've still got engine mounts, gearbox mounts and some exhaust rubbers to arrive as well. Well I think we're there now, that's the corrosion dealt with, wire wheeled off, treated with port 15 metal prep. Um, the whole area dusted, degreased and then etch primer applied to the bare metal areas that were corroded, the areas that we were working on. So that's just a pan underneath the car just to show you um, all the way to the front which I'll go there in a little bit more detail shortly. Central sections weren't too bad, as you can see there's only a small few patches of the etch primer which is anywhere that we've worked to remove some corrosion. Um, a decent amount around the rear axle carrier panel and also the trailer arm pockets, little bits in the wheel arch and down in the very corners. Those were the worst affected areas by the jacking points there and especially that left hand side where there was about four panels interacting with each other. There was corrosion in there, a little bit on that side, on the right hand side. Um, so that's what it looks like, very nice, dry. As you can see, I did decide to take off all the sticky sort of bitumen, uh, sort of, I don't even know what it was, wax oil or, or shalt, something like that, on that right hand side. There was a little bit on the left hand side there and a huge amount on the right hand side. That took a long time, but I'm pleased to have got rid of it. So we've got much more chance of the paints and sealers adhering to the chassis and not trying to lift because of the, the loose nature that it was being applied to. Also, you see that new bracket there, that's the one that I made and installed on the boot floor. And that's the new bracket that I've introduced uh, for the carbon canister that negates the, re, uh, the need for the whole battery tray bracket that we removed earlier on in the process. So I think I've shown most of the rear section already. You may not have seen the um, section here with the brackets that we had aqua blasted. So that's the fuel tank strap brackets and the brake pipe brackets, all on nice and original looking in the correct orientations. A uh, few bits on the central sections and I just go in towards the front now. So we ended up having to take quite a bit of seam sealer off in the sec central section. There's some really heavy ingrain wax which is not coming off with scrubbing techniques which we normally use, uh, nor is a wire wheel machine going to get into all these intricate areas. So I've spoke with the customer and what we've decided to do is leave the wax in there that's protecting the areas nicely because they're not corroded, they just look a little bit dirty and they will be hidden by the wheel arch liner that scoops all the way around the front and the only area that's visible in the front is this section here up in the strut tower which is not protected very well because it doesn't have much seam sealer on it from factory. So that's the area we're heavily concentrating on and right up in the turret where there was some corrosion up there as well. All this section here, as you see, is not really corroded in any way, even though it hasn't got any seam sealer, it's because the wheel arch is protecting it. So um, that's why there's still an area there which is dirty. It's extremely, extremely tough to get that off. Um, and it would seem a wasted time to take it all off with wire wheel techniques because of the box section nature that it is and then only to um, expose it to the elements unnecessarily. So it's not going to be on show, that's going to be hidden with a wheel arch liner and we're concentrating on the area that you will see um, when, when it's all built back up. So here, this is our special tool system to hold the engine in place. So I've scrubbed the engine as well, you saw in the video previously I was working on cleaning that up um, just to try and make it look a bit brighter because we're not changing anything underneath the engine and I've taken the cross member off so that we can work on the engine nicely and also get more access to the bottom of the chassis legs here. So we've made our special tools here which just balance the engine but actually via bolted method to the structural engine mounts of the engine block and then spread the load into the correct bolt holes 
or threads in the chassis leg exactly where the front cross member does. But what that allows is that us to, to get into the chassis leg a little neater without having to use one of those red engine crane bars um, and, and put unnecessary stress on the wing flitch panels for a prolonged period of time because it's not just a day we're working on the car. This, this will obviously be uh, over many days, um, if not longer, whilst we're doing the painting and masking process. So that's the way we do it. And the engine's cleaned up nicely. Some corrosion dealt with up on these internal sections. A little bit of corrosion up here where the um, front control arm bushes and the front aluminium plate bolt to. And then similar process on the other side. Corrosion was um, starting to, to come in around these sections on the lower edge and especially on the brake pipe bracket and the brackets there for the grommets of the wiring cables for the ABS and the brake pad sensor. The spring turret was also a little bit corroded and I think that's about it really. The central sections are really want much. The rear is all dealt with. So now we can go on um, to the proper mask around the front sections, gearbox and, and uh, engine, things like that. And then we'll be able to apply high build primer over the entire car underneath. Here's some more of the pieces for the 330. Um, new front control arms, obviously we're waiting for the other side to arrive, but there's one of them to show they are going to be new. New rear diff bush for the subframe, lower control arms for the rear axle, fuel filter with the internal pressure regulator, front Brembo brake discs, Brembo brake pads with the grub screws, uh, front brake pad sensor, rear anti-roll bar, rubber pivot bushes, um, a front right ABS sensor because that one didn't survive the removal process, it was seized into the hub and then exhaust rear silencer mounts there as well. Here we've got a whole set of plastic under trays. I think this is nearly everything. There might be one, one on back order, I think. And also the two front lower arch corners still to arrive. But this is um, all the plastics for the BMW 330. So we've got front wheel arch liners, front under tray, central section for the engine, um, right rear wheel arch cover, left rear wheel arch liner, um, this is an option that not many cars had, but fuel tank covers. That one is for the right hand side and that one's for the left hand side. Then we've also got gearbox cover and fuel filter cover. Those four that I've just talked about aren't normally fitted to this car, nor many uh, E46s. But um, we're going to fit them because it will look nicer, keep it more protected as well underneath. That's a fuel carbon canister cover, that one there. Um, and then I think... Yes, we've got one more hiding under there. No, we've just got the rear silencer heat shield as well, which is nice and brightened up because uh, the other one had corroded through quite badly through the fixing holes. And we've still got the main prop shaft heat shield to arrive as well, but that is most of the plastics and the heat shields for this 330 restoration. Here's some more parts for the 330 restoration. Automatic gearbox sump pan. The customer wanted the oil and the filter changed anyway, so we've got the filter just down here and the sump pan gasket and we took the liberty to get a new pan from BMW whilst they're still available so that'll be nice and bright and fresh once that's fitted. Uh, rear brake disc backing plates with the bolts, front brake disc backing plates with the bolts. Then we've got uh, brake pipes, BMW metal brake pipes front to rear plus the over axle brake pipe and the joiner and the spring clips. Then we've got handbrake cables and then a BMW handbrake fitting kit so that gets you handbrake shoes, the pivots, the adjusters and the springs. Um, one of the under tray little covers, service cover for the BMW M3 front aluminium under tray we're going to retrofit and also to retrofit the gearbox under tray we're going to need that bracket there to bolt to the chassis so it holds it stable. Um, one of the special rivets there for putting the front jacking fixture on the aluminium under tray for the M3 models. Engine mounts we're going to be renewing, so one's here, one we're waiting for. Um, center exhaust mounts we're renewing, one's here, one we're waiting for. Pair of gearbox mounts there, rear brake pad sensor wire, and then the four front subframe bolts to get the new subframe in place and to the chassis legs. So I've finished the high build primer stage on the underside of the BMW 330. Just panning down towards the front of the car through the central sections, down towards the front. We've also carried out a full and detailed mask of the car underneath. So we'd already done a perimeter mask around the outside of the car, around the top of it, to make sure that no atmosphere was falling onto the car. But then I've done uh, a mask of the engine bay, the engine, the gearbox, and also the front bumper 
front wheel arch liners, uh, the front wheel arches. Um, we've already talked about why we're not going into that area there, but I've done a, a mask where I want my brake line and I've done the central sections here which are going to be well exposed once the uh, new wheel arch liners are in place. So that takes care of all the corrosion that we found on the lower lips around the brake pipe brackets up there and including on the turret as well. So that's the front wheel arch for the right hand side. Same for the left hand side looking up at the turret and then also while we've got the special tools on is the cross member to hold the engine steady but also allow us much more access around the backs of here because normally the cross member is quite large and nearly goes all the way to the edge of that chassis leg and obviously covers all of this area here because it goes across the car and now we've got good access so we've taken care of some small little bits of corrosion that we're in in the edges and the panel joins as best as possible um, and also that area where we found this mount had been welded previously we touched that up flattened the weld down a little bit more and then touched the paint up same thing there was a bit more corrosion on this side so we've taken care of that again and just done a gentle blend all this blend line is going to be hidden behind behind the factory um, heat shields anyway so there's no problem there and then we've just pulled the heat insulation trays down on the side as best as possible so we can get our blend lines behind there and mast up to them and then they'll fold back and hide those blend lines same here you can see the um, transmission tunnel heat and sound shield is pulled in and obviously masked up so we can get a bit of paint down the back of there to hide the blend lines but we know as well that the gearbox is nice and protected and we shouldn't have any overspray on anything we've got our gearbox mount holding it up so that we don't paint the cross member um, which obviously we want to refit to the car but also the cross member just like the front cross member is quite large and bulky and therefore we can't paint everything because all this would be hidden well actually it goes from there to that one there I believe but um, so we've just got our mount here which we use on the M3 and the non-M3 models um, to support the back of the gearbox. Central sections are nice as well, nice flat floor finish, no real corrosion on these smallest smallest little bits around that vent output there but not bad at all apart from that and then looking into the sort of the seat bulkhead and fuel tank area and the rear trailing arm pockets so this is where we find the corrosion and like I say in those layers there that have injected as much etch primer and cavity wax after all the corrosion treatment and I talked about joining the three paces together so I've done that with some basic little um, MIG welds just to hold the quarter panel plus the internal jacking structure and the inner seal all together so it's rock hard now when you tap that with a hammer um, unlikely to open up when flex the, of the body happens anyway which is what it was doing previously because the sealer was showing a split because the panel there was so slightly moved so I've stitched all those three together now and got rid of corrosion at the same time so I'm pleased with that brackets here for fuel tank straps they've come out well um, trailing arm pockets again we had corrosion up in there that's dealt with so with that fuel breather pipe up there these are the brackets that we took off and actual blasted around the backs of and then you can see I've done one two three plug welds in there flatten them down another one two uh, three and then flatten them down just so it make them look as original as possible and we know that they're not corroded nor the inside now um, right front mounts Pleased to say that they had no cracks, so we're quite happy to carry on with those. Left mounts there, very small amounts of surface corrosion around the edges of panels and things like that. Um, spring turrets were, oh, spring perches were affected with corrosion. I think it was this one that was the worst. You might be able to see some of the, the pickling here, which is previous corrosion attacking, and also corrosion that was attacking these joints, of these MIG welds up here. Again, all dealt with right rear subframe main point some basic corrosion up there and on the studs through that hole there and that hole there taking those out because we'll put rib studs in that location and the bracket up here that we've remade and installed um, left rear small crack which we stopped through welded and smoothed over stud that was bad there we've taken out which we'll put a grommet in one and a, um, a rib nut in the other bit of corrosion up on that stud there which isn't used on this car for the bumper hanger so we've taken care of that corrosion as well and made sure that uh, there was a little bit of corrosion around that from the hole there so dealt with that 
and also up on the um, shock absorber turret. Small amounts around the edges of the sides of these panels, especially here and also on the back there. You might be able to see the pitting in the metal, but again, that's all treated and dealt with. And in that corner there, um, some general corrosion around these stud points, so we've got rid of that. And then on the battery tray, we've got rid of that corroded battery and put our new little bracket here, which we talked about already. And the battery tray is painted as well. And again, a little bit of corrosion around that stud there and also on that grommet hole there. So taking that out as well. And then taking out, that's why there's a weird pattern in there, is because if you saw the video earlier, you see that there was a lot of um, Schultz or wax oil in that location. So I had to take that out with a wire wheel system so that this paint adhered to it correctly. But that is all done now. That's pretty much dry. We've been using the infrared drone lamps and the workshop heater. So it's quite, quite warm in the workshop, even at winter now. It's dried nicely and we can move on to the um, Sprayable seam sealer next. The sprayable seam sealer is now applied, and also our coat or colour finish, which is our version of E Coat, which is this grey, green, beige, olive green sort of finish. And you can see I've applied that to the complete underside of the vehicle, right from the, the rear uh, boot floor section, including the battery tray, rear axle cab panel, wheel arches, rear trailing arm pockets, fuel tank area. Tunnel, transmission tunnel, both front sections of the floors all the way to the front. So we're going to have a closer look now. But that's allowed to been allowed to dry overnight. It's come out really well. We've got a bright torch on it now so we can see that everything's completely dry and smooth. Very resistant. You can't really mark it. You could scratch it and take it off if you're really hard, but being a car, you're not going to be scratching it underneath the car. It just has to deal with water, salts, stone chips, and things like that. And it, that, it does quite well. So looking up, there's the left rear mounting point for the subframe. There's the right rear. That bracket that we replaced. And this is the boot floor or the spare wheel panel right around the back as well. Battery tray with now the non-bracket and just that one there which will put a rib stud. Spring perches out into the wheel arches all the way to the top and onto the other side of the wheel arch on the left hand side come out really good lovely color pleased with this I still do need to do a light dusting of silver into the arches both rears and the front just a gentle dust just to give the impression of um, a factory robotic spray where they have a little bit of overspray in the wheel arches but uh, the underside stays this color so all up into the spring um, to the rear trailing arm pockets are dealt with where there was small amounts of corrosion on you know, little areas like this you know we take it very seriously and go into a very fine detail to remove this corrosion in here as much as possible on the bracket and this bracket and on the other side it's come out really well so you can see the exposed seams where we've had to take seam sealer off because there was um, corrosion moving in around this area and remember especially up here there was a little corrosion and pickling up here that's all been dealt with treated and then reapplied also in the tunnel. The tunnel isn't the most important area, I'll be honest, because it's not seen at all. It doesn't even see any waters because there's a huge heat shield up here and it doesn't even have seam sealer originally. So we could have left that, but we'd like to do it. So we've gone a complete seam um, color all the way through that as well. And then like I talked about earlier, just a gentle through blend behind the um, matting so that once the matting's unmasked and goes back, you'll have a nice contrast in joint. This is the area here where the fuel pipes and the brake pipes go. And this is the heavily um, dirtied area originally that had factory wax, which then got really dirty and holds the dirt. So that was all removed and decontaminated, neutralized, because if there was anything remaining, then the paints won't stick to that, but it has a deal really well. Nothing's coming off, it's extremely flat and perfect. Chassis legs looking good as well, all the way down towards the front. 
left hand side flank or the underside of the car. There was some issues up here on that hole and that grommet there. You can see where I've taken the seam sealer out. We'll put new grommets in when we go to um, rebuild the car, but that's just showing how much of the seam sealer we take off if we find a small amount of corrosion. Similar thing up here. But they've come out great. They're really flat and you can still see the, the shapes of the panels, even small spot weld divots. So that shows how, um, how our seam sealer isn't terribly thick and, and floppy. It's quite stable and thin as much as we can in the ends of the chassis legs. Up on the sides of the gearbox, as best as possible, not to get the side of the gearbox or anything because it's masked up. And then moving round to the chassis legs as they sweep up towards the engine bay. These are the areas where the front control arm bolts and the front aluminium wish, phone, uh, wish uh, plate sits. And around the backs of the mounting points in the chassis legs for the front cross member and including the anti-roll bar mount on both sides. Remember that was the area there that was previously welded by somebody. Um, and then we've done the wheel arches as well. So this was a complete front to rear restoration. So mainly concentrating on that strut area there, which is exposed even when the wheel arch line is in. Um, that's the area that we want to see visually enhanced. And we've checked everywhere else and we've got no corrosion everywhere. But that's the, the real area that we want to protect and cope. And exactly the same on the other side as well, right up into the spring turret as well. So really pleased how well that's come out. It's looking great. Now I can start the unmasking process and then carry out some cavity waxing underneath the car um, and especially in these jacking point areas down here where we find the most amount of corrosion and that will help slow things down um, for years to come. A few more pieces for the 330, so some last under tray plastics that were on back order. These are the front wheel arch liner lower sections, the front corners that uh, secure the wheel arch liner's main part to the front bumper. Also gearbox auto fluid, we have got another three litres of those, they're just not in this picture. Um, that's to do the gearbox fluid change. Uh, rear plastic bumper lower valance uh, distribution piece, they call it a rain guard or water guard I think. Um, and that, that secures the rear bumper valance to the bottom of the uh, spare wheel panel or the boot floor section. New set of wheel bolts and also the um, stone deflectors that go on the, the lower rear control arms. Here's one of the larger parts orders from BMW for the 330 restoration. That's most of the fixings and small pieces. There are still some items to arrive. Everything there is genuine BMW apart from the blue hoses which are the braided hoses with the stainless fittings they're made by hell um, so that will uh, it be an exchange of the rubber hoses that are currently um, fitted to most cars so I don't think I'm going to go through everything but just show you that we've got front uh, suspension systems um, spring pads uh, top plates bolts top nuts locking wheel nut set down here for the alloy wheels fuel tank bracket systems some fuel pipe holders fuel tube there plus the jubilee clips and the fuel filler neck um, fuel filler cap sorry plus the rear trailing arm cradles and the bolts then we've got front hub system parts um, exhaust gaskets rear spring pads rear shock absorber pieces various bolts for the rear axle assembly brake caliper spring clips and the brake caliper carrier brackets um, four new jacking pads, anti-roll bar, pivot bushes plus the brackets and the rear brackets. Lots of grommets here, self-tapping screws, plastic nuts, Prestel cage fixings, top hats, loads of various um, consumables there. Four new um, M badges for the wheels and lock and wheel nut cover, dust covers because we're going to put a new set of, well a refurbished set of uh, alloy wheels on this car. Um, then we've got the exhaust pieces, which are the clamp system that goes around the front exhaust system. One of the studs had to be renewed in the bound plate, plus the four nuts for that joint. Then various other nuts for the exhaust system. Um, brake pipe and fuel pipe bracketry, plastics and the metal pieces, and the flexi hose pieces for the rear trailing arm, and the spring clips there where the metal pipes meet the flexi pipes. Rear bumper brackets and also a rear bumper 
a shock absorber it goes onto the back of the chassis legs as one of those was missing possibly letting in water so that's about most of it um, now we've just got to uh, assemble all this and then lubricate all the threads and the grease um, the heads of the bolts as they go together so not only are they going to come undone in the future but they'll also be very well protected from the elements which is exactly what it should have had happen at the factory if there was care and attention um, in a restoration level being put into the car when they were built all these threads uh, would be greased and then they stand a fighting chance of coming undone in the future and we're also going to coat the tops of everything with a transparent wax when it's finished so it gives it the best chance of staying good and as pretty as all these components are um, even another 10 years in the future. So I've now done the cavity waxing and just starting to put the few, first few pieces on. So here's the front cross member with the new bolts which are greased on the threads and on the back of the heads so that they put less pressure on the um, powder coat that we've just installed. Torque correctly to BMW specifications and then paint marked as well. Um, also put the new engine mounts and nuts on there two at the front and then moving to the back I've just started putting the grommets in so we did actually what I should say is we've done the cavity wax which you can just see old pieces of cavity wax just starting to come out of the fluted areas but all that's been wiped down so that we haven't got any excessive dripping um, we've also done a lot of heavy cavity wax in the corners near the jacking points which we're actually going to leave there so they look dirty but that's an amber cavity wax um, it's not dirt it is just cavity wax because we want to fill those areas up because those were the worst affected with corrosion we also made sure that the drain flutes here are dry because sometimes people fill those up with wax and it sets inside and then the water can come out of the seal so we want to make sure those are definitely dry which they are started putting the grommets in position so we've got the 35 there the 20s up in the wheel arch the 12s in here the 20s here 20s and then the same on the other side um, Need to replace that one there that was just a cover to stop it going into the boot when we worked on it We've got the 12s the 20s 20 for the grommet 20 20 also start putting the heat shield on what a nice contrast it looks when we start putting new parts on so new bmw heat shield um, we've got wax not only on the back of the contact points of the aluminium to the chassis but also on the back of the metal nuts that we're using which are bmw ones and on then on the top of them on the threads so there's less likely chance for them to corrode in the future um, that one has to have a rib stud hanging at the chassis in that location so that's why we've got a plastic nut on that because that's a threaded one not a coarse thread it's a metric thread um, oh yeah and two new rib studs in this location up here because they were poor and also there's our rib stud solution for that bracket which is going to house the carbon canister um, system front subframe well the rear subframe front pair of studs are fixed in position torqued and paint marked as well um, and then the bracket that's what we're going to show the bracket up here which we've just waxed put some transparent wax so that should dry quite clear but what I've tried to do is fill it around the back so that you can see there's a white line now uh, a white line of cavity wax down the back which when it sets will create a waterproof bond then across the top as well, then across the bottom and on this side, but you can see this side there's now a gap appeared as some of it's dribbled out. So I'll wipe the excess off, delicately try and feed some more into there to make it completely white and full up with wax, just like that side. And then when it sets, it will be waterproof and then there's no chance of any corrosion building up from that area there. I think this is the final parts that have arrived from BMW. Some of these were back ordered items. So we've got the prop shaft with the exhaust central heat shield plus one of the carbon canister under trays there, what they call the filler pot for the fuel tank, uh, the fuel filling neck system where it goes through the quarter panel, rear differential cover, um, drive shaft rebuild kits for the inner CV joints, aquaplane guards, handbrake cable guides, various grommets uh, for the brake pipes at the front there, Prestel cages, screws, 6.3 self-tapping screws, and um, handbrake, um, anti-roll bar drop link rear brackets that go on the spring arm. Here's the exhaust back from the powder coater. So we did have this powder coated in a high temperature black. Um, it, we had to cut it into two pieces. It was the original exhaust and all original exhaust from BMW come one piece. And then if you have to separate them, if you have to buy a rear silencer or center section or front cats, you, get, you buy the proper BMW clamps. They're quite expensive. I think they're a good 25 pounds each. But that's what we've done and bought the proper clamp so that it'll look original 
Um, and there's the join, we cut it in front of the, um, well, just after the back cuts and in front of the middle silencer. But it's come out really well, looks great. Um, so you can't wait to get that fitted and start to see what it looks like. Looks very good actually, in fact. And we've got our stabilization bracket there, which we had to tack weld on during the, cap, uh, during the process for transport and working because otherwise they fall apart in two pieces. We'll carefully grind that off, touch that up, and then put the clamp system back in place on that area there. Um, also, we've had the wheels uh, refurbished. Um, so we've got new, fresh, original color um, for the MV1s, or Style 72 as they're called. I've only got one on show at the moment. The rest are in BMW wheel bags, just being protected. Just wanted to show this for the video. So we've got new wheel bolts for this, new uh, badges, plus the M badges here. And then also the customer needed two new rear tires. So we've got the Michelin, what have we gone for? Pilot Sport 4s in the two 55 18s as well. And then here's our pile of new parts that we're working from, just carrying out the assembly process now now that all the painting and cavity waxing is finished so we will carry on with assembly so we're now fitting up the brake pipes uh, fuel pipes fuel system um, and some of the front end components so i'm starting at the back of the car just showing the heat shield that i think i talked about earlier in the video with the new bmw fixings all the grommets are in locations which are the blue uh, uh, small black um, pieces which are in filling up various holes in the chassis that are factory um, cavity wax positions so we'll go closer we can have a look at the brake pipes now so we've got new brake pipes front to rear this is the over axle one it has a factory join at this system here and then these come straight all one long piece so we make them with the BMW special tool we shape them to the contour of the original brake pipe to make sure it's a, a good copy and then we've got our left one here which goes all the way to the front of the car and then also the right hand side one actually finishes there and then there's the BMW join system. And then the blue and the black pipe are plastic, those are fuel vapour lines. That heads off to the rear and that will be going to the carbon canister unit which lives here shortly. Um, we've got the, like I say, grommets in position. We've got the clipping points for the ABS and the brake pad wires, plus the junction boxes for those. Here's the rest of the BMW brake pipes with all the new clipping points as well. And the new fuel pipe, well these aren't new actually, these are original ones that we've been scrubbing, so supply and a return. I'm trying to get those as nice and parallel as possible. You see there's a little, that one's plastic and that one's deforming, so We'll try and get that one a little bit straighter just so it neatens things up. We could uh, obviously just fit them and just not worry about it and move on, but we like to try and think of it as quite high attention to detail work. So back of the gearbox, we've got the cross member, heat shield, new bolt, new rubbers as well for the gearbox mount, fuel filter, brand new fuel filter, brackets are cleaned up new jubilee clips all facing the right way um, and the brake pipes going up into the join location the service location in the near side front wheel arch here's the um, bottom of the front wheel arch liner which goes up to that join there and then there's another piece there which is what we call the front lower part of the wheel arch liner which we've also got new as well so cavity wax the lower edge here, which is the areas that suffer with corrosion. So after obviously the paint was done, we've put some cavity wax in, which is what's the amber color there. Um, brake pipe up there and the wiring we've cleaned up. Got the new front cross member on, which is the new blue color plus engine mounts. New front steering tie rods assemblies, which have been greased inside internally, so they'll always move and adjust quite nicely in the future. Steering rack's on in position. Got some more heat shields up here. Which are fitted and looking good contrast against the, um, the painted car underneath. And then also the other side wheel arch liner up to the front as well.
Now the fuel tank's in, starting to put the rear axle together and in pieces. So the fuel tank had loads of factory cavity wax over, which um, for some reason had set into the plastic and sort of etched itself in. So the only way was mechanical removal processes, which has made sort of a whitey patch over there, but it won't matter because we've got under trays to fit to this fuel tank area. This car and most uh, cars don't come with under trays for the fuel tank on the E46, but we've ordered them. They are available from BMW. So we've ordered them, which are specific to this 330. Um, and we'll be covering up the fuel tank in an original way, so we won't see that type of thing. But that's what it looks like with the fuel tank fitted. Before that was in, we cavity waxed the brake pipes all the way around the back of the fuel tank so that there's plenty of protection on there. The fuel tank straps have come up nice and the new bolts and grommets and washers in there. The rear subframe's in position. So we've got four new subframe bushes, two front diff bushes and a rear bush up there. Um, it's all just loose at the moment. As you can see, the bolts aren't fully done up there or the nuts. Then we've got, at the moment, sack stampers on the rear. We've just put the trailing arms on, which have been powder coated. And we've got new wheel bearings in there, uh, new ball joints, top and bottom, new trailing arm bush up in there, plus the cradle and the new bolts. Lower camber arm, upper spring arm, with the correct new bushes in that position there. We've got blasted hubs, um, new backing plates, new BMW handbrake system with the adjusters and the pivots and the springs. Um, like I say, new wheel bearing and hub. And that's the same on the other side as well. At the moment, we've got old bolts in here. We're just waiting for the new ones to arrive from BMW, so that's why it looks old. But everywhere else and there, we will be using new. Fuel fill-in neck system and the box is all in position with the new clips and the pipes have been cleaned up to remove themselves of all the wax. Fuel fill-in neck connection pipe, brand new plus the um, Jubilee clips from BMW, that looks excellent. Held up with the new, uh, that was the rib stud that we put into the chassis there and we put one there so it's looking great. Here's the carbon canister, which is using the new bracket system, which you can't actually even see it. Now, it's not until you look on the side, you can see the top of the rib stud, which we've got coming out of the chassis and the plastic nut on holding it secure. And that fits up into the leftover bracket up in the chassis, which we left. Um, moving down this area, looking at the brake pipes and the fuel filler neck system. Brake pipes are all connected up in the chassis on the service point. Uh, front control arms are on, wishbones, with the M3 bushes. We're not quite sure we have, whether we're going to run those or not. So obviously we're interacting an M3 bush with, an M, uh, with a non-M3 arm. So we're seeing if it works. Um, we've never done it before. If it is safe and we can use it, we will. If it's not, then we'll revert to 330 bushes um, without the thread in this system here. Um, it's just a trial at the moment. So that's what it looks like with the front wishbones, plus steering tie rods are new and fitted and fully greased in here so they'll always align in the wheel alignment for many years to come. And then going over to the other side we've got exactly the same on this side as well. So next up we're just putting the rear discs on. The rear brake discs were almost brand new before this process happened so we're sticking with those just being cleaned up at the moment and then um, be rear calipers next as well. So I'm just assessing if these drive shafts can be rebuilt and renewed um, by repacking and painting and um, or whether they need to be replaced and interestingly on this, uh, I forget which side this was now, but the ABS ring basically fell off. It was already dented out of shape and it fell off pretty much as I uh, handled the drive shaft. Here's the ABS ring. So it's been replaced before and it was obviously corroded the drive shaft. So somebody's tried to do the ABS ring, which was out of shape anyway, and it wasn't holding on. So interestingly, they've tried to increase the diameter of the drive shaft by um, adding material to it. So we've got wire, which has been wound round. And amazingly, we've got feeler gauges as well, <laughs> which have been packed underneath the ABS ring and on top of the drive shaft 
to try and thicken the drive shaft up so that the ABS ring sits in place on there, but it wasn't because it was bent already and wobbling. So that's quite a, a bodge there. I've not seen that before. Feeler gauges underneath the ABS ring and wire wrapped around it. And you can see that somebody's had this out before and they've been installing it incorrectly because to get it in through the hub on these splines, which are all very hard to get through, there's lots of screwdriver marks here, which is where people incorrectly try to hit them through the hub and all it does is damage and dent the casing around here. So there are marks and if we do go on to reuse this, um, if you see installation dent marks, then you'll know that it's not us and it's this video just shows what we found from somebody who's been working here before. We've now got the brake calipers on and the blue hoses, which are the hell braided hoses. Also rear shocks connected up, uh, spring arms, lower control arms, trailing arms are all fitted. And then moving down towards the front, we still need to do the gearbox pan. Got the front control arms on. We're just suspending the front. That may look odd, but that's perfectly safe just to allow those to sit and rest on their ball joint stops. So we've got front control arms, new Brembo front brakes, um, discs and pads, hub nuts, new backing plates, new powder coated um, calipers from Hale plus the carriers, steering tie rods connected up um, and next up we will be putting in the differential. Here's one of the drive shafts after we've refurbished this in house. So no problems with the drive shaft. It wasn't knocking um, or even leaking to be honest. It was just, uh, this one was badly corroded. There was lots of flaky corrosion where the powder coat on the shaft had broken. Um, plus the outer CV housing was quite corroded. And there was a small bit of corrosion affecting these here. So from BMW, we bought the um, inboard uh, CV joint reseal kit, which gets you the boot, the clips, and the cases. These are the important bits that we want. We don't want the CV joint because we've reused the original one. We want the end cap case and then the inner case which has got the protrusion for the boot to, to hold on to because these have got some sort of, well they're brand new metal and they've obviously got some sort of shiny coating on them which I forget the technical name but that's what we want to, to stand out and make it look like a brand new drive shaft. The BMW drive shafts are between 500 and 600 pounds each side so it seems pointless buying new ones when like I say there's nothing wrong with them they just need cosmetically improving so um, took it all apart took the CV joint and all the six ball bearings out um, repacked it with well first of all painted the shaft so got rid of all the corrosion painted the shaft didn't take this CV joint off because you cannot buy this piece here which is effectively the opposite end of this piece you cannot buy that and you can't get it off and it's held on with a special factory machined crimp system so if we take that off to get that CV joint housing off, there's no way you can put it back on. The drive shaft's dead. So we've opted to clean that, all the corrosion off of it in situ, and then carry out the paint process of that at the same time as painting the CV, uh, the, the drive shaft shaft, and also that CV joint housing. You can see only a black ridge of that, but the CV joint housing is that wide, and I've painted all of the outer diameter of that. Um, and then, cleaned up the boot as best as possible, put that back on, new stainless ochre clamps back in position on there, um, and then rebuilt this, repacking it with new GKN grease, and then the end caps with the Hylomar uh, glue on there, um, cleaned the boot, well no, that's the new boot, and then put the clips on, and that gives us a what looks like a brand new drive shaft, but like I say, it's been in-house, rebuilt and refurbished, and then that's ready to go into position. And before we put it in position, um, we will wax the um, ABS ring here. So these are notorious areas to corrode and we wanna make sure that that stays as good and as fresh as it can do for many years to come. So the fuel system and the brake pipes are all fitted up, nice and new looking. All the paint's done throughout the car and the central section and the tunnel plus under the floors. Heat shields and plastics looking nice and fresh. Fuel tank's good. Got the lovely differential in place. So that's one that I've done in house as well. Painted that and then put a brand new rear cover on there as well. Got new subframe powder coated with the new bushes. Four bushes for the subframe. Diff bush, 
two front diff bushes as well. Push rod, which is this item here, which holds the front and the subframe together. Carbon canister and all the bracket cleaned up. Now I've taken that bracket off and just used our own little small bracket. Upper arms, BMW original lower arms with that canvas system down here. Rear shocks, these aren't yours. These are just some that we've got in stock that we've put on there just to hold this, the suspension whilst we're working on it. So we'll sort that out uh, when the suspension comes in. New ball joints, new wheel bearings, new handbrake cables, brake hoses, new calipers, original discs and pads, which were the Brembo, which we cleaned up quite well. Trailing arms, trailing arm bushes, cradles, bolts, fuel tank straps, uh, fuel filler neck system and bottle all cleaned up and just putting the ABS sensors and brake pad sensors and things like that in position. So not long to go, drive shafts will be going in next and then also the prop shaft up here. Then we've got under trays for this joint here. Normally you didn't have under trays but we're going to put under trays on the fuel tank area um, just to smarten that up. Then we can put the side skirts on, we'll be putting new um, jacking pads in there so that's why I paint over your original ones because we'll put new ones in there in that location as well then we'll be putting heat shield on the center prop shaft tunnel then we can put the exhaust on front to rear like I say then the suspension suspension springs um, then we're really not far away then then we've got things like the under trays the plastics um, the new wheels and tires that we've powder coated and uh, and we're really there then. So not long to go Five shafts that we've rebuilt in-house. So these have come out really well using BMW parts, rebuild kits. And remember how rusty these were. This was the really bad rusted one. I've taken them all apart, wire wheeled all the rust and corrosion off, treated it and then painted it. So it's all nice and fresh and new. Done the same with this one. This one's still got a bit of grease on it. I need to take the grease off. But here's the new crimped painted ends, rebuilt ends. New ABS ring on this side because we found somebody had already changed that one that wasn't quite right, so we sorted that out for you. And now onto the exhaust system, rebuilding of that. I mean, it's quite easy. It's only two pieces because we made a cut through the center of the original pipe. And then I've taken off the stabilizer that I made before we powder coated it, painted the area, and then put the genuine new clamp system on. So that's good contrast and also keeps the front section nice and stable. Um, we've got the clamp systems that were joined there. They're not in this picture, but they'll be coming up shortly. Just assembling the center plate with the new rubbers and the new nuts. New rear hangers, which will go on with new nuts. Tailpipe trim, there's only one that's been cleaned so far. I still need to clean the other one. And tailpipes had, so they've got the way that these clip on is they've got a spring clip in there, which when it goes over that piece here, which is a spot welded piece, one, two, three, four spot welds that hold a little bit of metal on. And as it goes over that piece, it then clicks into place and holds the trim nice and tight. Well, on the other side, it was effectively missing because it was so corroded. So I made a copy of it. And that's my version, which I MIG welded or plug welded on to the tailpipe and then flattened it down before we went to powder coat. So we're about to see if my effect or my attempt did work. Um, also, we've got heat shields and two vibration mounts. Now these didn't really need rebuilding as such, but I've taken them apart and then cleaned all the rubber because that one originally, well, it was blue like that, but when we got to it, it was just a dark dirt color, sort of like a very dark gray, nearly anthracite. And then I've also, um, on the stainless backing plates as well, I've taken them off and, uh, and then buffed them effectively so they're looking nice and fresh and new. So we'll get those on the exhaust and then we can put that on the car. There's the rear silencer rubber mount on mounted, uh, torqued and paint marks. There's the centre silencer rubber mount and the heat shield, same thing. One tailpipe trim on, still the other one I need to clean. Both rubber mounts fitted on the rear silencer. And then here's the front section. So that's the bracket I was talking about earlier on, which we've fitted up and marked. Customer wanted the same blue, ultramarine blue on the reinforcement plates that hold the centre rubbers. So we've got new centre rubbers, nuts, and the plate and then these are the genuine BMW clamps that I was talking about. I think they're a good £25 each. It's expensive for an exhaust clamp but they do make it gas tight and, uh, and this is probably the best way to do it.
there comes the gearbox fluid draining out of the gearbox. We're changing the pan, the filter, the gasket, and the fluid. So here's the fluid draining out. There it is with the pan off, uh, just dripping, drip dry. Well, whilst we wait for that to drip, then we can get on and change the filter without getting too covered in automatic, automatic transmission fluid. Great for you, just showing you the uh, exhaust where we are, the exhaust progress. These are ready to go on pretty much, just finishing the gearbox which we'll show you next. But here's the front of the exhaust system with some new clamps there and also the ultramarine blue exhaust plate with new rubbers and new nuts. There's the front anti-roll bar, the M3 roll bar we've upgraded you for with the bushes and the drop links still ready to fit. Here's the rest of the exhaust system, which looks fantastic. So center exhaust plate and rubber, heat shield and vibration damper here. New rubbers on the outer hanger, and then one tip on. I'm still cleaning the other one, so that one's next to go so on. We're just waiting, well actually waiting for that to finish drying. So this is the gearbox, the automatic gearbox, and this is the inside of it. So we've taken the pan off for the outside because we're changing that, plus we're changing the fluid and this green gasket and the filter, which is this thing here. You can see the filter uh, material in there. Looks a bit dirty, but it would do. It's probably the original stuff. So that's what the inside of the gearbox looks like with all the actuators and the valve blocks. Once that's finished draining, then we can get on and change those items there. We've got a fuel filter cover system here. There's the back of the fuel filter. And there's the cover, which we have powder coated, which is a nice option. Um, heat shield, center heat shields on, and the prop shaft. So that's looking really smart. Painted the end of the prop shaft. And there's the fixings where it goes onto the differential. I want to show you the rear. Look how good this looks. This is the rear axle assembly on your BMW E46 330. Obviously these are donor shocks like I mentioned so you'll be having proper shocks as soon as they arrive. I'm just showing you now what it looks like with the under trays on the fuel tank area that we talked about to cover the fuel tank. That center heat shield going down through the prop shaft. The rear anti-roll bar in ultramarine blue, rear drop links, new rubbers, new brackets, new drive shafts. Well, sorry, they're not new drive shafts. These are ones that I've refurbished in-house that I think I showed on the video earlier on. Brake pipes are fitted up along with the brake calipers up to the new brake pipes through there. Brake pad and ABS sensor wiring is all correct and installed. The rear springs are fitted with the spring rubbers, these are all new. They look odd, but they're chalky. That's how they come from BMW. Um, so yeah, it's looking really smart and fantastic on the back end. Not much to go now. I was hoping to do a video to show you the exhaust fitted, but we have to do the gearbox first because the exhaust passes underneath the gearbox and it has to be done in this order, gearbox first, then exhaust. But when the exhaust is on, it's gonna look amazing. And then we really are at the final stages. Once that gearbox and exhaust are on, which is going to be today, then we are just waiting for that front suspension and the rear shock absorbers, and then we can get the front finally fitted. Everything else is fitted on there. All here ready to just lift up into position as soon as the shock's here. And then I think that's pretty much it. Front under tray and reinforcement plate, um, a brake fluid bleed, pop the rear bumper on, and then the wheels, and we can then go out on road testing. Things are progressing really nicely with the 330 underside restoration. We're still waiting for the shock absorbers to come in, the correct sport model shock absorbers. So at the moment we've got a donor set of shock absorbers. These are just our test ones that we've got in stock. So they're not the final ones, they're just holding the suspension in place at the moment. So a lot more has happened since we last videoed. I think at that point we were just getting ready to put the differential into position, which is what we can see now looking up, all fitted with new bolts, new bushes, um, across the back section and the two new bolts in the front end as well. Drive shafts with the boots and the gaiters and the new reinforcements plus the um, the bolts there as well. Um, the brake pipes are fitted up, the flexi hoses up into the points of the main brake pipe over the axle plus the brackets and the spring clips in this position down here. Lower camber arms and the Plastic guides are fitted as per factory. Uh, brake pipe, uh, brake pad sensor wire and the ABS sensor wire is all fitted and routed correctly. Um, 
Then we've got things like the rear anti-roll bar. So we've got the same aquamarine blue rear anti-roll bar with new drop links, plus the nuts and the bolts for the suspension bracket on the front suspension and top suspension arm. Um, anti-roll bar pivot bushes and rubbers, rubbers and brackets plus nuts and bolts. We've also got the push rod fitted up, which is the front subframe pair of bush suspension sort of reinforcement bracket that also bolts into the chassis just up here. Um, we've got the prop shaft, which is mounted with new bolts, new vibration reinforcements. And we've done some painting on the prop shaft as well, just to tidy that up. We've also got that heat resistant plate in position for the near side front subframe bush that goes directly above the exhaust system. There's the view of the BMW stone and splash guards which go and protect the camber arms in this position here. Vibration absorbers for the exhaust. We cleaned those up and fitted those so the exhaust come out really well. I should show you that. That we powder coated the exhaust in a high temp black. Clean the tailpipes up a little bit. Looks good against the heat resistant plates like the heat uh, shields for the centre section and the rears. And then we've also opted for the very rare um, under trays for the fuel tank system, which this car didn't have from factory. Um, I don't think we've ever seen a car in the UK with these plates on. It might be a non UK thing. I might be wrong there, but we've never really noticed any of those. M3s have them. But the M3 ones are very specific because they have a, a moulded gap just here for the V-brace which connects to the push rod. So we could use M3 ones but it wouldn't be correct. So we managed to find on the parts catalogue the correct part number for the 330 um, under trays for the, heat sh for the uh, fuel tank. And they look really good, very fresh, new plastic always does. But we've made sure that um, that's going to not only make the car a little bit more aerodynamic but also keep waters and salts and mud and things away from going into the fuel tank area and also underneath the axle because they actually extend to just sort of halfway through the middle of the diff so there's a lot more protection for the rear suspension and rear axle assembly so I'm pleased that we've managed to do that. They fit into all the standard factory fitting points there's nothing that needs drilling or tapping it's all correct and just slide straight in as uh, as they were intended to from factory but for some reason never always got fitted. We've also upgraded the corners to aquaplane guards. These again weren't fitted from factory on this model but we've made sure that aquaplane guards are fitted. That directs some of the water, standing water, away in heavy sort of downpours driving on the motorways for instance. Directs the water away from the, the tyres so that helped a lot. Um, springs, I'm not sure if they were fitted last time, so we've got the springs in position. New top and bottom rubbers, they might not look new but they are, they always come through chalky. It's a very dry rubber which has got a chalk on it, so those are brand new, top and bottom. The brake pipes we've waxed, so they might now look a little bit dull, which is where we've put a, a transparent wax on it and it's dried in a transparent fashion, so that we know we've got good protection up in those areas there, especially where they're common to, um, to corrode. Then the exhaust system you can see now is joined back together because we had to make a cut in the centre of it to allow the exhaust to be powder coated. Um, so we've joined it with the BMW clamping system here. We've got the middle reinforcement plate on with the rubbers and the new nuts and bolts. And then the chassis reinforcement one which looks the same. And then going down to the front cat section, that's also been powder coated. Looking great with its new bracket up here holding the um, front center section together. Normally on a manual car, that would have a, a manual gearbox join up here, but on the automatics they don't have it because the automatic box is so deep and long, it doesn't have a secondary bracket. New gaskets, new bolt, and four new um, nuts for that position up there. The heat shields on the chassis leg looking nice and fresh. And um, great. And also there's the final heat shield or the middle heat shield which is quite a long one that covers all of the prop shaft and most of the exhaust system, a good centre plus of the exhaust system. Still love those brake lines there, they look really great. Two brake lines on the left, um, fuel vapour and then a fuel supply and a fuel return with the new clips, the plastic pieces plus the metal pieces. 
fuel filter cover. I don't think that was on last time. So that's a metal structural piece, which is uh, which we've powder coated as well because that looked a lot fresher when it was powder coated than the original. Again, with the new nuts in position up here. Just scanning around, trying to see what else you may not have seen last time when we did this. So we've got the gearbox, fluid and pan and filter and gasket changed now. And that makes a massive difference. Give you a pan backwards from underneath. That just looks stunning. I mean, it's a real eye catcher, that central piece, especially because we've got the torch on it at the moment. But that zinc yellow passivate color really stands out and does to break up the underside because the undersides of cars normally are quite dull and can be said to be boring but um, that's where we do sort of an original factory finish e-coat colour which is quite a, a brightish colour I suppose um, and then you've got standard colours like the silvers for the aluminium plus the blacks for the, for the standard axle pieces and then that's when the customer's personalisation um, colour plan comes into position. Some people just want to stick with blacks and silvers and some people go crazy and have bright colours um, and then some just do a few splashes of colours and that's this one's probably a more in mid-range one where it's just got a two colour options um, a blue and a red so we've got red for the calipers and then blue on a few things red for all four calipers and then ultramarine blue for the rear uh, rear anti-roll bar rear springs the exhaust plates um, we've got a blue hell braided lines and then we've got the blue front subframe just up here so it's looking also quite nice underneath the engine I think I did show this already we did a scrub and a degrease and a clean so the engine although that you could say argue there's still bare aluminium and, and possibly a little bit dirty it's all been degreased so it's nice and fresh looking and things like that so the front suspension struts have just arrived so we can now get those fitted up into position now all the front has been patiently waiting all the, uh, the other items are fitted just showing you now that what the wheel arch looks like with the black plastic against the original finished color of the uh, chassis where we've done the full body paint we also need to detail and paint the brake pipes because there's still some bare metal areas up there we don't paint them over with the brick with the chassis paint because that wouldn't be correct we'll detail and touch those up once they've been connected through to the flexi hoses and all that all goes in a certain order because now we're waiting for the struts to go into position uh, and then we can update the car the video a little bit more but there really isn't a great amount much more now the exhaust is on which is one of the main things it's just suspension at the rear a suspension at the front get the rear bumper and side skirts on and then we can put the new wheels on and carry out some brake bleeding. Here's the suspension struts now that we've got them from BMW. These are genuine BMW sport model items. These are the ones that we struggled to find from Saks and other places because they've got no longer available. The only way to get them now is BMW. So they've got the monopoly on them. 459 and 460 are the sport model shock absorbers. And we've done top and lower, top and bottom uh, spring pads new bump stops inside, new dust covers, the springs are powder coated in the standard, um, what did we go for, ultramarine blue, new washers and top plates and things like that. And also there's the anti-roll bar, which is in the matching color. Uh, this is the M3 anti-roll bar, plus the roll bar bushes. So we can now start getting the front end built up. Well, the front's really coming together now. We've managed to get the BMW struts in position which uh, holds all the suspension in the correct position. So there they are with the blue springs, which is what the customer wanted. They look fantastic against the paint. And you can still see the areas where we need to touch up the brake pipe, like I talked about earlier on. Once they're connected and all the fluid is uh, the fluid risk is uh, diminished, then we can um, get the paint on. So now you can actually see the proper new Brembo front brakes, discs and pads with the refurbished calipers, genuine backing plates. See we've got copper slip grease around here so they don't seize, new bolts, uh, new hub nuts and um, hub nut covers, new wheel arch liners all the way around and that gives you then a better impression of what the front looks like. Now we've got the front arms in the correct orientation and also the um, front steering tie rods. Um, some of you may notice that we have changed the bushes on the 
front control arm because originally we had M3 bushes on there because we're going to be planning on putting an M3 reinforcement plate on um, but it turned out that that combination wasn't working for whatever reason the bushes we tried two different style of arms we tried a Lem Forder arm and a TRW arm and the M3 bushes were just slightly too loose for the fitment of the arm they'd go on but they would just be a little bit too loose for our liking so there's some slight difference between the um, internal diameter of the bush and the outer diameter of the arm so we opted for safety reasons to go back to the 330 or the BMW bushes which is what we've done here we've got genuine BMW front bushes but these are from the Z4 so they uh, as far as we're aware aren't a hydro bush whereas the original bushes for the 330 were hydro elastic which have oil inside them and therefore are a little bit of an odd or poor design you might say so we've gone for a solid rubber but BMW 330 it, it does lose the thread here that means that we can't then connect the M3 reinforcement play into that thread we'll see how close it lies later on whether we need to stick with an M3 reinforcement plate or whether we need to revert back to a 330 reinforcement plate but that keeps the arms in position um, we've also now got the front anti-roll bar arm. We still need to clean up the copper slip that's exposed to that though. But just have a look how how easy this is to how much how small amount of movement we need to create. Tiniest small bit of pressure gives a fantastic uh, twist on there where there's no resistance because we've got a great amount of lubrication there with fresh powder coated um, anti-roll bar and obviously a new bush and new nuts and brackets and things like that but that all makes a nice difference whereas lots of um, cars come in to us where they've got all the powder coat is chipped off and it's got massive corrosion problems in this point here because it's been rotating all of its life and then that gives a huge resistance uh, into the rubber you think um, rust and broken powder coat trying to trying to pivot into a rubber product it doesn't work so it's really nice to see one moving so freely and easily like that so now we can get the drop links fitted up and connected to the struts and then um, then we're on to the reinforcement plate I think now so now we've done the brake bleeding and we've coated the brake pipes and now we're just touching up uh, the standard black finish from BMW so things like the struts here and also the brake disc backing plates they're a very poor uh, protection even though they look nice and solid black they don't last long at all even after a few years old when we see new cars that black finish is always coming off Whereas our powder coat finish is extremely thick and durable. So what we're doing is uh, putting some transparent wax on top of the BMW black pieces, which we know will likely corrode the fastest. And we're gonna prevent that from happening because we're putting transparent wax on that. So on the back of the brake disc backing plate, also the suspension strut there. And although it looks a little bit white now, it will dry transparent. So you won't notice it's on there, but it will give excellent protection um, from waters and salts and things like that. And you can distance, you can see I painted the brake pipe black and we've also put a fantastic layer of wax on that so that it really does get all the way around the union and create a solid wax seal. So in years to come, if this ever needs to be undone, it will come undone and it won't be corroded together again. So remember, we're not interested in doing the powder coated items that we've done because they'll be extremely durable. We're doing the standard BMW parts that have a very poor finish on them. And this is a transparent wax, so it will dry very thin and go clear once it's on there. And that just makes sure that the black pieces from BMW are coated and protected with a, uh, a light coating of wax. So the idea is that it still looks visually pleasing and nice to look at and you can still see the colours and things um, and how good the car looks when it's still original but we're preserving it and putting a protection layer on there um, and it's not like one of these sort of black Schultz or wax oil finishes it's transparent very light and thin but it's still a wax based product I've just done some wax protection on the rear and um, I've waxed these lower BMW arms you can just see a little bit of a gloss or a shine which looks like lacquer that is the transparent wax so it doesn't look much and it is dry and transparent already and it will dry so it's not completely solid dry it will stay a tiniest bit tacky but it gives a fantastic protection and allows everybody to still see how good and clean the car is also done the brake disc backing plates as well um, and over the ball joints and nuts and things anywhere where there's basically some of the BMW um, black prop, uh, 
products, which is these items here, these cradles. Whereas our powder coated items, we know are extremely strong because they're powder primed, powder coloured, and they've got plenty of protection on them. Done the brake pipes down the center as well. So you can just see where it goes heavy, it turns white, but then that will dull down into a near transparent finish. So that's all the way down through there. We've also done the protection plate for the fuel filter system because that is a standard black finish. And then also done the BMW gearbox, the auto gearbox. So that changes the color slightly because it was a very multi-colored yellow zinc passivate and now it's one more sort of uniform color but those corrode extremely quickly so that's why we've coated that one as well and that makes it um, a lot more durable and likely to last um, a longer time. Also done the fixings on the under trays because these are high impact areas for stones and um, abrasion and water and salts to stick on here because it's at one of the lowest points at the center of the car. And now we're just doing the brake pipes We've done some uh, brake pipe protection just here and you can see where the collection of it is. It's starting to go white which is a heavier collection on those brake pipes. We don't mind that. We're quite happy because we want to see much more protection on the brake pipe points. Ends of the ball joints here. That is a heavier one so we'll get that run off and then just do some more delicate touch-ups on there. And then we're nearly at the stage where we're just waiting for the last piece of the puzzle to come in, which is the shock absorbers. These are our test shockers, like I keep saying, and we're just waiting for the genuine BMW sport model shocks to arrive and then we can get these fitted up. So new powder coated, freshly refurbished wheels are on with genuine BMW wheel bolt, locking wheel bolt kit, which we'll put a cover on there next. New wheel bolts, um, we've still got to put the end badge on, but we've got some of these new genuine BMW floating center caps. So when you're spinning along, uh, the wheel, the weighted center cap should stay there. So we'll uh, give it a quick spin and just see what happens. Yeah, nice. Here's the rear BMW shocks that we've been waiting for for a while. These are the genuine E46 M Sport shock absorbers for the six cylinder models. Uh, these, it turns out, are no longer available from people like Saks, the original manufacturers, um, and lots of other ones when you look into it, just can't offer you the sport model. And there's a specific part number for these sport model shock absorbers, which is a different shock absorber to the SE one. So I'm glad we've gone to the, to the uh, detail to get the correct ones. There's the part number there that ends in 461. 461, 461. Um, and that gets you the shock absorber. Um, normally it just comes bare, complete, just the shock absorber, and then we order the extras. So we've ordered the dust tubes, the bump stops, the top plates for the top mounts, and then we order the CSL top mounts. So these are specifically for CSL. Um, I think they fit convertible models as well, but it's just a slightly harder rubber, we believe, compared to the normal 325, 330, and actually it's better than the standard M3 ones as well. So there they are, fully fitted, and now we can get them onto the car. We've got the M3 reinforcement plate on now. So this wasn't as good as we thought. We were hoping we were gonna be able to connect it to the front control arm bushes, because we put M3 control arm bushes, but I think I mentioned in the video earlier, they were just a bit too loose. So we've gone back to, well, a nice halfway house. We've not gone for 330 hydro elastic rubber. We've gone for the Z4 3 litre rubber, which is still genuine BMW near solid rubber but it does definitely fit onto these 330 control arms so that's why you don't see any bolts through those sections there of this m3 reinforcement but because the m3 reinforcement is the one we had blasted that's the one we're going to go with anyway we've checked in full droop for the contact risks up here where they would have connected into the m3 ball joints and there's no chance of touching there nor on the control arms so we're going to run with this one and we've put the new bolts in took them and also the oil filter drain cover which is actually redundant on this because it doesn't line up with the 330 cover um, and we've also got the jacking point just up there as well uh, and then now we can put the front under tray on the underside is complete now on this e46 330 ci restoration so it's a complete underside restoration from the rear of the car down through the centers all the way to the front so just going to walk you through that now and show you some of the items that we've carried out well all of the items so there isn't a single nut and bolt on this vehicle underneath the car that we haven't touched or replaced or refurbished or changed 
every single thing fixing wise is brand new. Then there's lots of components of hardware which have been blasted and reconditioned with powder coating procedures. Um, right down to some of the items in house that we've carried out paint processes on, like the differential and the drive shafts, for example. Then lots of new pieces from BMW, including the shock absorbers, um, fuel filling systems, spring pads. Uh, what else have we done? Heat shields, centre exhaust heat shields here and the rear exhaust heat shield. So the exhaust has been powder coated in a high temp powder coat as well. We've got excellent contrast in colours against the heat shields to the BMW finish, the E-coat finish that we've applied to the underside of the chassis. Including new plastics. I believe apart from the rear bumper valance, every single plastic is brand new. So we've got the carbon canister plastic, the water deflector, the other carbon canister plastic. Now a very nice and rare option that this car didn't have and not many non-M's do, so we've bought those from BMW, is the fuel tank under trays which deflect water and road water, salts and grime away from the underside of the car but also make it a tiny bit more aerodynamic if we were being picky. So there's a left fuel tank under tray, a right fuel tank under tray, and aquaplane guards, which are separate, and they weren't fitted because there's nowhere for them to suspend to because they wouldn't have an under tray normally. And that's not just a fuel tank under tray, even though the fuel tank is covered up to about there, that does go at least halfway through the rear axle. So that really does send a lot of the water and components away from the areas like the axle that would normally suffer with um, corrosion and things like that, which was this car was, and nearly all cars do, even after sort of three, four years old. Some of the the metals that BMW paint with just a very basic black, like some of their control arms and their differentials and their diff carriers, those are already corroding, even after the car is just a few years old. So our process is including the powder coat, which is um, uh, a powder primer and then a powder colour, and then also a clear transparent wax, which we've put under the underside of key components that will probably outlast the car's lifetime now. And that's certainly our hope and our aim. And only time will tell, but we're very confident with our processes. These have been changed and altered, always for the better over the last sort of 12 years from when we did our very first BMW E30, right up to now BMW M3 CSLs and E92 M3s. We can do as much or as little as required, but some of this, uh, this work is extremely time consuming in stages from the strip down, the degreasing, the assessment of the corrosion, to the car need panels, seals, jacking points, wheel arches, rear axle carrier panel pieces, and then right into the corrosion protection stages with the primers, the paints, the sealers, the cavity waxing, all those sort of things. And then all the amazingly nice, interesting, well it's all interesting, but certainly the very nice work which is the rebuilding of the car with all these brand new components, whether they be new from BMW or whether they be refurbished, like the powder coating that we apply to the anti-roll bar, the springs, the diff carrier, the exhaust system, the trailing arms. It's all catered for and all dealt with. There isn't a stone sort of unturned, as you would say. This is a full, fully thought out process, which um, every single thing gets considered and nothing gets left. So now we're looking at the centre section where the exhaust heat shields and the exhaust reinforcement plates are. Customer wanted some of the blue colour in, so this is an ultramarine blue powder coat, which he also extended to the rear springs and the rear um, anti-roll bar. We also got the blue braided hoses from Hell, which are the stainless steel fittings. And we also have got the powder coated brake calipers in uh, a bright red, which, um, which complement and just break up some of the components which would be normally just black and silver when the car was new. And we still do have some of those silver aluminium colors like the spring arms, which are an aluminium color, diff plate, 
or diff cover for the rear, which is um, bare cast aluminium. And then things like the push rod here, which is the rear subframe front bush reinforcement plate. That's also um, silver aluminium. New heat shield up here for the near side front diff bush, so it doesn't get heat soaked from the exhaust system. Um, there's the exhaust clamp joints in the middle. BMW's excellent clamping system, which makes a gas tight seal so you don't need any sealing paste, um, no welding butts, no gaskets. It's just a simple clamp joint that they supply in all different sizes. They are quite pricey, but they do the job perfectly and they're genuine. So that's certainly what we like to use. This area here is a really heavily corroded and um, heavily waxed and dirtied area when all cars come in of this era. The, the E46 was the last sort of car that didn't have underbody coatings, underbody panelling underneath. So the factory sprayed when it was on the re uh, production line near the end of the process, the car would drive over um, a wax delivery system that would shoot wax all over this area here, which covers all the fuel in the brake pipes, but it also goes over the exhaust plates, the under trays, and just carries on going all the way to the back. It gets really everywhere and you even see wax over the back of the diff and under the boot floor areas. And over the years, all the dirt and grime stick to it and it's extremely hard to get off and sticky. But that's one area that we excel at and remove all the contamination and the, the risk um, of painting over wax. That's all removed before we do our complete front to rear body paint. In a, in a factory matched e-coat colour which is um, a sprayable seam sealer so that makes it look great when you then you compare against new brake pipes which are here these black ones so they come in straight lines we buy them from BMW and then we bend them in house with our special tools to match the original shapes and fixings so you'd think normally just brake pipes are quite easy but they go vertically up the uh, up the rear bulkhead then they go around the fuel tank and come out up just here and then when they link onto the left rear very flexy and then there's a factory join just up there which we always make sure we put back and then an over axle brake pipe which then delivers the brake fluid over to the right rear flexi and then we've got fuel ventilation pipe and then we've got fuel delivery and fuel return these are the original pipes that cleaned up extremely well they are coated and they don't seem to corrode so we renewed, uh, replaced, refurbished those ones with simple cleaning processes. And then that goes all the way up to the front. So there isn't an area that we haven't sprayed or, um, or coated with protection, the new fuel filter system up there. Then we move on to um, new plastics up here. This is an interesting one because we've managed to get um, the E46 M3 gearbox um, under tray fitted to this model. This is obviously an automatic, which you can tell here, we've got the larger automatic gearbox, which is not only longer, but also deeper. Um, comes down very low, very close to this under tray. And this under tray doesn't fit normally. There was trimming required on the NACA duct area and also another stabilization bracket required up here, but it doesn't touch. It is completely clear and very solid. So that covers a good, two thirds to three quarters of the gearbox. Now that makes sure that the waters and salts and mud and grit and all the normal debris that would land all over these metal components just simply gets passed on towards the back of the car. Um, normally these, these metal or steel plates for the bottom of the gearbox sump pan, which actually are zinc yellow phosphate coated, um, they normally are corroding quite badly um, so that was why we changed this one because it makes visually a huge imp a difference for appearance but and it also saves the risk of any corrosion on the outside that could have thinned out the area um, so what we've managed to do is get those under trays fitted which means not only well you can tell it's an m3 one there so it didn't fit but we have managed to get it to fit perfectly and not only does that give um, good clearance good good sort of protection for that gearbox. We then managed to get the fuel filter M3 under tray to fit, which normally wouldn't fit, but that does perfectly fit that area there. There are no problems in there. Um, again, with all new fixings, we've blasted the uh, 
gearbox cross member, the rear section. Then these heat shields up here, these were in good order, so these were simply removed. There's four of these and painted. These ones here, there's one here, and then another three that go up by the manifolds and up to the chassis leg area. The reason why these center ones were replaced and the rear one was replaced is because they are quite um, hold uh, because they have corrosion problems where the metal uh, touches or the steel touches the aluminium heat shield you have a galvanic reaction and then therefore they get extremely large holes around the bolts so they need massive washers to hold them which doesn't really work it means they're insecure plus sections of them start flaking off because this is a multi-layered piece of aluminium pressed steel a uh, pressed aluminium around this area here lots of areas keep flaking off and falling apart um, and the other reason is well because it's dimpled it gets extremely dirty and it's very very hard to clean so simply we change those items whereas like I say ones up here which are more structurally sound um, then we get those we paint those in house actually so we've got new bracket system here for the exhaust front clamp normally these bolts and specifically on these ones they were completely rotted away to a point where the inside um, of those pipes were completely thin and basically snapped because of this corrosion factor had eaten into the steel of that M8 bolt, both of them, and they weren't um, doing anything anymore. They were just simply floating um, and could have slipped back, but corrosion had held that tight to the pipe. So once we'd uh, powder coated the exhaust system, then we put a new one, new bracket system on that location up there. Uh, the exhaust downpipe had to have one new BMW bolt, that is the correct bolt, that's the only ones you can buy now. The original ones used to be splined and they were pointed on the end. Uh, these three survived, but this one didn't, this one snapped, so the only ones you can buy now are a hex bolt, which fits in there, and then we've got new copper nuts in that position there. Then we've also gone on to the reinforcement plate, which is um, an M3 item, and now originally we were, if you've been watching the rest of the video, planning on using the M3 control arm bushes, which we're gonna screw through the reinforcement plate into them. That didn't work out, they were just a little bit too loose for our liking. They probably would have worked, but I think they would have worn out too quickly. They cer certainly were probably safe, would have passed an MOT test, but they just seemed a little bit too floppy for our liking. It might have been the fact that they were, there was a mixture of aftermarket um, bushes versus arms, we don't know. We didn't necessarily have time or the, the inclination to go into it massively, but we've gone on to put Z4 three litre control arm bushes in there, which are a nice uh, halfway house because the original ones for the 330 were um, like a hydroelastic. They had rubber and oil inside of them, whereas these Z4 three litre ones are predominantly just rubber. So that's a good option. Um, so we don't have the fixings for them, but there is plenty of clearance. There's no way that anything is going to move and come into contact that, 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 with that. The same for this location up here, the M3 uh, control, the M3 reinforcement plate um, on a control arm has a ball joint with a thread in it. So you get an extra connection in there. But again, on full droop, we're quite happy that there's no contact risk in that area there. So although it doesn't add any more stiffness in this car's instance, because it's still got the original connection points of eight bolts, for the front cross member and the chassis legs. We're still happy that it looks a little bit different. It gives the car a different quirk and um, and it's the one that we went and worked with because we blasted it. It's a little bit wider. It just brings another talking point, another interest to the car, especially when we've managed to get another few M3 items just here and also then the fuel tank covers under there. It just makes it a little bit different. So we've gone with the customer's choice of the ultramarine blue for the front cross member front subframe which is what the engine sits on we've got fresh new engine mounts in that location up there and new bolts obviously um, for the cross member and the engine mounts then we've got a very detailed high cleaned steering rack which you can't see because it's behind the uh, under trays but um, um, new steering tie rods that's the inners and the outers and these inners have been all separated and then greased through the middle so that you make sure that the threads are completely um, coated and it'll always come undone, come wheel alignment time. Uh, not like BMW when everything was assembled dry and it just seizes up because of corrosion after a few years and you have to keep replacing things. Our idea is to try and keep this car on the road for as long as the customer would like, but also um, outlast, or we want these components to outlast the vehicle 
um, so you don't have to keep replacing things like on your normal car where everything starts seizing and corroding after a few years and then 10 years time it needs an overhaul and bushes changed and things like that. We've gone for front shock absorbers which are um, genuine BMW items. We've got the correct matching part numbers for the sport model. This is a BMW E46 330CI sport model and uh, therefore it has the sport dampers. I think it's option code 226. So we've made sure that we've got those and they're fitted. Same with the rears. We went to a lot of trouble to, to get those ones. They just weren't available any suppliers like Lenfor and um, like Saks, the original supplier. They just do not make the sport ones anymore. They've been superseded to a SE one. So we had to go genuine, which is um, a fair amount of money. Just to give you an idea, the four shock absorbers from BMW work at about 810 pounds. So you can easily rack up the parts prices on these jobs. Um, somebody was asking the other day sort of how much these these jobs cost and the parts can it really get quite expensive obviously BMW being a premium manufacturer can if you order quite a lot of components will be expensive some customers go for the original exhaust system brand new so that would include manifolds then front cats front silencers and rear silencers and that can be sort of nearly £4,000 in itself. That's extremely rare. I think we've only had that once, but most of the time they can be powder coated. But easily a parts bill on something like this with a, with a high finish with all the fixings and the powder coating, the blasting and the new components, all the plastics, the under trays, the shocks, the rebuilding of the um, kingpins, wheel bearings, tie rods, front control arms, um, front backing plates you can you can easily spend between five and seven thousand pounds at bmw on some of these components not necessarily just at bmw but with a parts bill for one of these jobs when you think about the under trays 50 pounds for the corner under trays 50 to 70 for the main wheel arch under trays another 80 there these ones are about 120 the rear they, they just keep on it just keeps on going it's quite a, a a scary eye-watering amount sometimes when uh, when you're putting these orders through but they certainly make a nice job and um, and if we if we could do one like this every day we would be really happy we know it doesn't come along very often but it's certainly something that we enjoy doing we put our heart and soul into it and hopefully it shows with the the interesting videos and pictures that we put out because we want to show what we can do um, what people do do to their BMWs and it's not just because it's trying to um, add the vehicle, add value to the vehicle. Some people just do this because they simply love the car, like this customer. He had the choice of buying a brand new car or putting some money into this one, which he'd had from nearly new. And he decided he loved this one so much, he never wanted to get rid of it. He didn't see the point in, in renewing to a new, brand new BMW when this one did everything he wanted. Um, so simply some of the money from the new car just got diverted into rebuilding this one. So it's an interesting way to do it. Um, other cars, obviously you can add value to them. The BMW Z3 M Coupes, E30 M3s, possibly E36 M3s, E46 M3 CSLs, possibly CSs at the moment. Everything's starting to, to rise, E34 M5, E28 M5s. Those sort of ones, there is scope in them to add significant value. If it's a low number production car, or there's not many left, um, a restoration like this can give uh, a significant boost to the value of the car if you were either thinking of selling it or holding on to it for another five, ten years and then releasing it with it fully restored underneath. Or just for the sheer fact if you enjoy the vehicle, you want to know that it it's, it's, um, aesthetically looks fantastic underneath. Probably one of the better ones out there in the UK, Europe, worldwide, who knows. Um, or you just want to know that it's extremely well protected from the environments, well coated underneath, um, cavity waxed extensively, those sort of things. Um, or you just want to feel what it would ride like from new. Some people have that hankering where they bought the car many years after it was produced but wanted to feel what it was like to drive a new one where all the new suspension is working in harmony with brand new rubber bushes and anti-roll bars that are pivoting correctly because there's no corrosion on them and they're greased accurately and those sort of things. So there is scope for um, people to consider this if, it is, uh, if you're that way inclined. And if you do, give us a call at Reedish Motorsport. 
or get on our website and have a look at some of our other videos. We're on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. We'll put lots of our pictures and videos up there, especially YouTube. If you're watching this now, you're probably watching it on YouTube. So have a look at our other videos, get on our website and feel free to email us um, or give us a phone call and we can talk you through some of the options. And uh, thank you for watching. And there it is, the job is finished. I'm just about to give the car a clean on the exterior. Uh, we've carried out our road testing, also a full brake fluid bleed and the wheel alignment process. And now the customer is here ready for, uh, for us to show him the underside and, uh, and then carry on and take the car home.